Hello there, this is Glenn Berry from Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, we're only going to cover one query, but it's an important one. This is Query 31, Database Properties. This series of videos is going to go through the complete set of my SQL Server 2019 Diagnostic Information Queries. These queries are available for free at glensqlperformance.com resources. Please keep in mind that I have other sets of SQL Server diagnostic queries for other versions of SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, and SQL Managed Instance. The query you see demonstrated in this video is very similar to the same query for older versions and the same concepts apply. Now let's take a look at Query 31. As you can see, it's a large query that pulls back a lot of information about the properties of all the databases on the instance. This query reads from sys.databases, which is documented here. The query also reads from sysdm OS performance counters and the sysdm database encryption keys DMV, which are both documented here. At a high level, this query simply shows many important and interesting properties about all the databases on the instance. This is a very valuable query in real life, and I find issues that need to be corrected on just about every instance I ever run it on. Now let's run this query and see what it returns in more detail. So once I get the whole thing highlighted, I can run it, and we'll see what happens on my instance. Looking at the results of this query, you can see the first column is database name, and that shows you the name of all the databases on the instance, including the system databases. The next column over is database owner, and that shows you who owns the database. That should be SA in most cases rather than an individual login. So you can see that database bad DB properties is owned by freedom9 slash Glenn, and that's my Windows login on this machine. The next column over is recovery model, and that's going to be full, simple, or bulk logged. And you want to make sure you understand that and make sure that it's the right recovery model for whatever your business practice is. In most production databases, you want it to be full rather than simple. The next column is state description, and it's online. If it wasn't online, it wouldn't show up in this query. And then containment description has to do whether it's contained database. That's a feature that's not used that often, to be honest, at least in my experience. The next column over is log reuse weight description. And this tells you why the SQL Server transaction log can't be cleared. Normally, that's going to be log backup or nothing if you're running in full recovery model, but it might be other things. And that's something you want to pay special attention to because that's going to prevent your log from being cleared. And if that's happening, your log will fill up and grow and fill up and grow until you run out of disk space. And that's called a runaway transaction log. And that's a very common issue. So this query will help you spot that. The next three columns in this query are showing the size of the transaction log in megabytes, and then how much is used in megabytes, and then the percentage that it's used. And again, this helps you spot runaway transaction logs. If you come in and see a database at 60, 70, 80% or more of the transaction log is being used, you probably have a problem there. Either there's no transaction log backups being taken, or there's something that prevents the log from being cleared, even though you are taking transaction log backups. Now we can scroll over to the right a little bit and look at some more columns that come back from this query. So if we stop at database compatibility level, that's actually really important on modern versions of SQL Server. Prior to SQL Server 2014, this didn't matter as much. But with SQL Server 2014 and newer, the compatibility level controls a lot of behavior in your databases. So you need to understand what compatibility level your databases are on and think about if that's the right solution or not. Is mixed page allocation on is another new feature was added, I believe, in SQL Server 2016. That's something you want to have turned on for newer databases in most cases. The page verify option, it can be checksum torn page detection, or none, and it really should be checksum for all databases. And you might see torn page detection if the database originally was created on a very old version of SQL Server that got upgraded over time and nobody ever bothered to change that. I'll also sometimes see databases that are set to none because people think that setting it to none will improve performance, and that's not really true. The difference in performance is completely negligible, and checksum just makes it more likely that you're going to detect corruption earlier. So always have your databases set to checksum. 
The next column is, is auto create stats on, and that should be on by default. And I think it's a good idea to leave it there. That just means that statistics will be automatically created by SQL Server without you having to do it manually. And that's a good idea in most cases. Is auto update stats on is another one that's set to one by default. And that's usually also a good idea. That just means that as the data changes over time in your table, the statistics will be automatically updated based on a threshold, which may or may not be enough for your application, but it's better than nothing in most cases. The next column is, is auto update stats async on? And that's not turned on by default. But personally, I think that should be turned on by default for most databases, especially OLTP databases. Because if you don't have that turned on and you get an automatic statistics update that happens, that happens synchronously. And any queries that are using those statistics will wait for the statistics to be rebuilt until they actually execute. And that can cause your application or queries to freeze up for a few seconds or longer on very large tables. So turning that on usually is a good thing to do, mainly for OLTP databases. Now, if it's a reporting database, it could be a problem in some cases to turn that on. Now we can scroll further to the right on this results set and see what else we can find out from this query. So if we stop at is parameterization forced, that's off by default and that's usually the right way to leave it. There's very limited use cases where you wanna turn that on and you wanna make sure you do very thorough testing before you turn that on in production. The next column is snapshot isolation state and that just tells you whether or not you're using snapshot isolation on that database. And there's certain times when that's a really good solution, but you also wanna do testing with that. The next column is, is read committed snapshot isolation on, so RCSI. And that's something you can turn on to try to reduce blocking issues. But again, you wanna test that very thoroughly before you roll it out into production. Next we have is auto close on, and I think you should never ever turn that on. It's off by default for good reason. Is auto shrink on is another one that should never be enabled, in my opinion. You see it's turned on on the second row on purpose here, but that's going to try to shrink your data file and your log file anytime that there's any empty space in there. And that's not a good idea, especially for the data file. The next column is target recovery time in seconds. And with SQL Server 2012 SP4 and newer, if you are on a new enough build of, the, of SQL Server 2012 or 2014 and newer, you can turn this on and this will let you get better I.O. performance in some cases because it lets it use the dirty page manager feature in SQL Server and it lets it do indirect checkpoints. So that can help I.O. in many cases and I think you should have it turned on on newer versions of SQL Server. So for target recovery time in seconds, by turned on, what I mean by that is a value above zero. Zero is the default for older versions of SQL Server, and 60 is a good value to set it to if you want to have the, that feature enabled. So if we scroll further to the right, we'll stop at is CDC enabled. And this just tells you whether change data capture is enabled for that database. The next column is is published, and that just tells you whether or not this is a publisher database in SQL Server replication. Is distributor tells you whether or not this is the distribution database in a SQL Server replication topology. The group database ID and replica ID columns, those have to do with availability groups. So if your database was part of an availability group, you would get information back on those two columns. The next one is, is memory optimized elevate to snapshot on? And the next one is delayed durability description. That's a feature that was added in SQL Server 2014 that gives you better transaction log performance at the cost of possible data loss. And there's some scenarios where that's a good idea to turn on depending on what's in your database and whether or not some slight data loss would be acceptable or not. Let's take a look at a few more columns that come back from this query. Next we have is query store on, and that just tells you whether or not query store is enabled for that particular database. Query store was a new feature that was added in SQL Server 2016 that's very useful and not enough people are using it in my opinion. The next column is is sync with backup. And that has to do with replication. There's a way that you can use a backup instead of a snapshot to reseed a subscriber. So this has to do with that. The next column is, is temporal history retention enabled? 
And that has to do with whether or not the temporal retention policy cleanup task is enabled or not. And then is remote data archive enabled? That tells you whether or not this database is enabled for what's called a stretch database. And that was a feature that was added back in SQL Server 2016 that lets you store data and really large archive type tables up in the cloud and then synchronize and move data there automatically. And it's an interesting feature, but it's quite expensive, so it really hasn't seen very widespread adoption. The next column is, is encrypted. And that just tells you whether or not your database is encrypted with transparent database encryption. And then the encryption state and percent complete, and then scrolling over just a little bit further to the right, the key algorithm and key length, that all has to do with TDE and how you set it up, and if it's in the process of being encrypted, how far along it is in that process. And then finally, the last column here is accelerated database recovery on, and that's a new feature they added in SQL Server 2019 that lets you go through recovery much, much faster but you need to be careful with that and test it because under some workloads, it can hurt performance. But for some workloads, it's extremely useful to make your databases come online much more quickly if, they've got, uh, if they would have normally had a really large transaction log full of data that had to be rolled forward or rolled back. This is Glenn Berry, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you would like more content like this because it really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching.